Now, Sinn Féin has won a historic victory in the Northern Ireland Assembly election after it became the largest party at Stormont for the very first time. Well, what could it mean for the political landscape in Northern Ireland? Joining us now is political correspondent for the Irish Examiner, who's just had to hop off <laughs> Good Morning Britain to come over here. You're all over the place, Aoife Moore. No, people are going to be even more second wave. Keeping, you know. people, <laughs> enter busy, busy. keeping people informed. Now, come here. We were talking about this on, on Thursday mm -hmm. as to what was going to happen. Has it played out as we thought that it was going to? Sinn Féin, you'd said, yeah. like, we all knew Sinn Féin was going to be the largest party. Yeah, I think the polling very much showed um, that it was accurate. You know, Sinn Féin are now the largest party in Stormont with 27 seats. The DUP had a bad day out, but it wasn't as bad as many people had predicted. So the last poll we saw, we actually saw Alliance and the DUP neck and neck. That's not the way it fell out. So the DUP are still the second largest party, now with Alliance in third. Although the historic symbolism of Sinn Féin being the biggest party is going to be the headline of the day, I think the biggest shift we've seen is the Alliance party. It is very, very clear that people who would have traditionally maybe been unionist voters have moved away from that viewpoint and now they have voted for Alliance. Alliance had a great day out. They had uh, a lot of, like the Lord Mayor of Belfast, Kate Nuckill, who's actually 35 weeks pregnant, was elected. They had a great day out. A lot of really popular councillors were elected. Um, but it came at a cost. Uh, the, D the SDLP vote completely collapsed. The Green Party vote, they lost their only two MLAs. Their Green Party leader, Claire Bailey, also lost her seat. Mm -hmm. Big shock. The SDLP, the Transport Minister, Nicola Mallon, she lost her seat. So it has come at a cost at, at the other parties, but I think for the most part, the polls were correct and the Sinn Féin are now the largest party. So uh, for people who aren't watching, Alliance Party are kind of the middle, they're not green, they're not orange, yeah, they're so that middle party. So it's a kind of a younger trend probably as well of people who don't want to get involved in the religious side of things, who just yeah, want something so to happen. The Alliance are uh, a non-sectarian, non-aligned, neither unionist nor nationalist party. Now, they used to be seen as a kind of unionist with a small U, but they very much moved away mm. from that now. They usually hold the justice ministry because they're seen as the adults in the room. They can deal with justice. <laughs> okay, yeah. Their leader, Neil Milong, has been in politics, um, like I remember from as long as I can remember. She is formidable. She's a really popular leader speaks a lot of sense, yeah. people really like her. Um, so that's trans, uh, transferred and a lot of votes to them. But you're right, it, has, it does appear. It's not so much you can say people moved away from green and orange because Sinn Féin have consolidated their vote, but people have moved away from the traditional unionist parties. Yeah. And that's what we've seen this There's week. also an immigrant population in Northern Ireland who wouldn't come, I think people forget that, who wouldn't yeah. come from a Catholic or a Protestant, a unionist or a nationalist background. You know, yeah. they, they don't have any of the hang-ups. Yeah, and we call, it, like, call them like the new Northern Irish, but basically yeah. that's what we're seeing. And we are just seeing, you know, a younger population. I would also say the, one of the best things I think about this election is this is the youngest assembly we've ever elected. Yeah. It's also the most women we've ever elected. Yeah. Um, so I just think Northern Ireland is in a bit of a shift at the minute. It's becoming more progressive and we're seeing that with but, the alliance so, vote. So but are they going to... Is Stormont going to meet? Yeah, so what's going to happen? Gonna, what, like it's not, is it going to meet? What, no. was me, what would be meant to happen? Okay. So, what, yeah. so what's supposed to happen is Brandon Lewis, the Secretary of State, is coming to the North today to meet with all the parties. They would have a big meeting and then by Friday we have to nominate a Speaker of the Assembly. Once you nominate the Speaker, you're supposed to nominate a First Minister, a Deputy First Minister, and Stormont returns. But we know that the DUP said that they are not going to come back to Stormont until the issues with the protocol are sorted. It doesn't appear from Dublin, Brussels or London that the protocol issues are going to be sorted anytime soon. We have until September. So there was new legislation brought in that says Brandon Lewis can give us till September, six months from the election, and he will call on our election. As a northerner, I can tell you, if you give us an amount of time, we will use all that time <laughs> up until the deadline. So I think we could still be sitting here at the end of August with no storm. Because the DUP, they said either the secretary, Brandon Lewis, either he wants an executive or he wants a protocol, but he can't have both. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't look like there's going to be any shift. In the, I mean, the protocol's got nothing to do with Northern Ireland. It's but to do with the EU and the UK. And I think as well, it definitely shows that the structures of Stormont need to be looked at because yeah. it is not democratic for one party, who are not the majority party, mm. to hold the rest of the executive and to ransom. And to take their wage as well. Exactly. So, so if they collapse the government, could they still take their wage as well? Yes. yes. So they're not going to work, still they're not going taking to work, their wage. But they will still be paid, yeah. 
And this is their, the cost of living crisis was something that was talked about on the doorsteps in there Northern Ireland There is also three million pounds sitting in a bank account that could be spent in Northern Ireland but cannot be spent until the executive comes back. Conor Murphy, the finance minister, has basically begged everyone, please come back to the table. We have this three million pounds. We can alleviate some of the cost of living crisis, but without the executive, we can't do it. So people are feeling it in their pockets. And to be honest, the DUP can you know, beat their chests over this. I don't think they can weather this politically. The last Stormont shutdown was so deeply unpopular for Sinn Féin and the DUP. I don't think they would weather another They've one. They've closed it since February. So they stepped mm -hmm. down in February. Yep. So they have done this. It could be until September. Wow. And then you say it would be another election, so yep. like what we're seeing right now. Yeah. Yep. But I would venture, this is just me totally guessing, but I would venture if there's another election and it gets to September and there's been no... Uh, executive, the people who will pay the most for that is the DUP because they collapse storm. The, see, this is the thing. There, there will be some form of retribution because it didn't collapse in the way that we thought that it was going to collapse for mm -hmm. the DUP for an awful lot of people to do a turnout. I'm mm -hmm. sure that some people who would normally vote DUP maybe just didn't turn up yeah. uh, on the day. Yeah. Um, but these are these are issues that one party does, as you mentioned, seems mm -hmm. to be holding around because the UUP are happy to work within they the confines of the. Of the yeah. They've said we yeah. will go back. And, you know, it was so clear when you watch the leaders debate, every every single other leader, including Doug Weedy from the UUP, said when we were on the doors, when we were canvassing, people were not talking about the protocol. Yeah. They were talking about the healthcare system. The healthcare system in the north is on its knees. People are taking out credit union loans to get very, very typical procedures in private hospitals because they've been on waiting lists for five or six years. The cost of living crisis, education jobs. That's the things people care about. The protocol was not mentioned mm. in any great shape. The DUP tried to make this election about the protocol and that is not what was coming up on the doors. And, and Sinn Féin didn't particularly make their side of the, the their story about a united Ireland. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can see it's the, the front, front yeah. of the examiner today. I mean, it's not even on the radar. We saw Leo Varadkar talk about it yesterday. So that wasn't part of their spin. Definitely but, not. So they... What Sinn Féin tend to do is once they get a line, workers and families, yeah. they trot it out all the time. <laughs> so um, Michelle O'Neill's big thing was, you know, a first minister for all. That uh, was that was her yeah. thing. And that was the message they were pushing all the time. They were asked about it actually in the leaders' debate on the BBC and Michelle O'Neill said, you know, we're not calling for this tomorrow. She very much played down the border poll thing, whereas the DUP, all their pamphlets, all their literature, talked up the border poll. If you vote for Sinn Féin, if you don't vote yeah. for the DUP, there's going to be a border poll. There's not going to be a border poll anytime soon. But what Sinn Féin are saying is we need a plan for this. You know, it's, it's coming down the line whether we like it or not and there needs to be some sort of plan done. But I don't think it's something that we're going to see in the next... Or not, because it's days. also Citizens' Assembly down here. Like, it's, mm -hmm. it's not something it's that... It's a long way away, but I think yeah. it would be silly not to plan for it. Well. Yeah. Um, well, I think that this is going to be very interesting over the week as to how see this is going to play out.